Hey guys, super excited about today's episode. It is a different one that we've ever done before. It's with the founders of McDougal Bats. They make this super amazing bat that um, they made this custom one for us as a thank you. Uh, but they found a way to make bats almost indestructible, which when it comes to wooden bats, that's hard to do, and they're right here in Bend. But what we did with them is we brought them in and we brought in uh, one of our experts, Morgan, as we broke down, this is exactly how to do a campaign. This is uh, exactly how you start selling these bats like crazy online and making a ton of money while doing it. And every single process getting into the nitty gritty details of custom audiences, lookalike audiences, pixels, product catalogs, creative. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, video retargeting. So hopefully you guys will be able to take this and implement it for your own businesses, or your own marketing initiatives. Uh, please comment below for um, any other sort of tips and tricks you would like after watching this. Really excited that we were able to put it all out there for you. So without further ado, enjoy this podcast. What makes this thing much more indestructible than a typical wood bath? Well, basically the the hickory and the handle, because that's the iron of woods, mm -hmm. and but along with that strength comes a lot of weight. So uh, we transition out to Oregon grown tan oak uh, in the barrel to bring it back to a normal swing weight, so it feels like any regular bat. Got it. And we've got two patents on how we do that. Okay. Um, and so Mitch and I actually came to your guys' facility and seen what's worked and this is just like everything you can see in here is actually a, a different piece of wood that you guys all intertwine together to yeah. really create like this super, super strong bat that um, is actually, still all wood. Yeah, that's still all wood, right. Mm -hmm. And you're able to, um, or what we're now, what uh, you're getting into is like uh, a lifetime warranty on youth bats because they because they last, they don't break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so, what? When did you guys get this started? Um, and how did it like? How how did the side hustle become like the main thing? Well, <clears throat> it it was uh, kind of serendipity. Um, uh, I had designed and built homes for thirty years. Okay. Before I got into this, and then in. Uh, 2008 that all all went away <laughs> it did okay so we're talking about in bend so, when the crash happened yeah. and all the development all housing stopped yeah okay and uh actually i had uh, been looking around for work and there was nothing here and i was even looking up in seattle where i was born and i had uh, actually got a job uh to be a project manager for this company and what they wanted me to run was uh building a, a new restaurant for the number one chef in Seattle in the ground floor of a new high rise, which was actually a kind of a lifelong dream of mine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've always wanted to do, you sit in some restaurants, you look around, you go, wow, this would be a lot of fun to build. And so here it was, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in looking around for a place to live up there, <laughs> I, I was so discouraged. And I, w I was not going to go into the one or two hour commute sure. lifestyle or anything like that. So I, I bagged it and I said, I'm just going to go back to Bend and hunker down. And uh, driving down the street one day, I had always coached baseball and both the sons played. And um, the, I was listening on NPR. They were talking about how Major League Baseball was convening a committee uh, to study the breaking bat problem because it was, you know, dangerous. There's barrels flying all over the field and with sharp ends on them. It was just a real bad situation. Mm -hmm. And I, th I was thinking at the time that, God, you know, somebody ought to do something. I'd lived through those pain points myself with buying, you know, a hundred dollar wood bat and two weeks later, it's a hundred dollars worth of kindling. Right. And, uh, what so were you saying more you're looking up uh, sometimes two at bats. Yeah. Or like yeah. Metal I, I broke my mm -hmm. very first bat that we paid. It was a nice customized hundred and thirty dollar bat. Yeah. Gone in a week. Awful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So 
Well, I was listening to this on the radio, and I, I remember exactly where I was driving down <coughs> Newport Avenue mm -hmm. and uh, listening to that and thinking, uh, God, somebody ought to do something about that. And then I had a little, you know, you see in the cartoons, a little light bulb that goes mm -hmm. off. Well, I had to accept that my light bulb was a picture that looked like that. <laughs> it was, okay, what's the significance on that? So it was know. just the p. It was just a way to make a bat, laminate it, still make it all be wood, mm -hmm. and uh, but laminate it with wedge shaped pieces uh, all the way around, so the the strength is symmetrical. Um, and uh, I thought, wow, that might work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went home and started making prototypes in the garage. Because and Ian, were you, how old were you? Uh, that would be 2008. I was in college. I was up at Columbia Basin. So I was home during the summers. Okay. Yeah. I remember taking tongue depressors and, and scraping <laughs> epoxy <laughs> onto, yeah, onto the pieces. Doing everything yeah, in, in the, the garage. garage. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun. not the methods that you saw in the shop. <laughs> sure, <every day>. sure. <laughs> and you played in college. So I played in college and professionally, bats? yeah. Oh, um <clears throat> We we did some some testing and stuff in my yeah, college cool. for that yeah, because yeah. we were wood we were wood bat league as well so awesome that helped. And what were the guys saying in college? Um, I mean for the, there's a couple that went on and used them. Um, it was you know it was early stage still yeah. initially and yeah. and there was a lot of promise there at the beginning. Most of the time it's it's different mm -hmm. and baseball players in general are relatively kind of set in their ways yeah. and su superstitious but um so initially it was a it was a hard thing to get past oh you're just making these bats mm -hmm. like that they're, they're they're not louisville slugger it's like all right that's not that's not where this is at this is a lot better than what you think it is and so once people started giving it a chance and started to break into it like oh wow like i i love this it's got great pop it's got you know a lot of different things and then once I was done with college we finally fell onto this this model with these woods and that's when it's really started to take off sweet yeah so now um, what we're going to dive, gonna dive into uh, now is basically um, my team um, headed by Morgan here uh, went through um, your guys' ad account on Facebook and we're basically like, okay, here's a strategy we would like to use to sell as many bats as possible. And then we talk about doing something like, let's just make turn it into a show and have other people learn from it as well. And we're not going to hold back anything. Like, mm -hmm. this is how we're going to do this. And we're even going to go into what's 2020. Mm -hmm. Like, what is going to be pretty common practice. It, probably, it might not catch on until like 2021, 20, 2022 when you start seeing what you'll see at the end of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the companies that are adopting it now are, whew, it's pretty good. Um, but first, to speaking of spy, side hustles, gotta have you guys try my side hustle. Well, your guys' <laughs> main side hustle. Yeah. But this is have a hot sauce, and I'm looking to get taste tester feedback. And so this is fermented. And um, we basically just started making it, me and my best friend, because we were like, we like hot sauce, and so we're fermenting a bunch of it. And people were like, "This is really good." And I was like, "This is really good." And before I you know, I was like, "We gotta, we gotta do something." <laughs> so this is the meat side. This is actually not meat. Have you guys ever heard of Beyond Meat? Of what? Beyond, Beyond meat. meat. That's not. So what we're like a couple Burger of vegetarians King. here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> oh. is that what it, that's the Beyond Burger. Okay. No, that Burger King has the Impossible Burger, which oh, okay. is their competitor. Um, and this is uh, that. That's just chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Simple uh, old chicken. Yeah, exactly. So what's this based on? Um, so what's in it is bell peppers, habanero peppers. Um, I'll just put a little dab there in the middle. And then um, there is a lot of spices. So there's garlic, there's there's cardamom, there's hibiscus. So it's called habanero hibiscus. There's salt, there's sh uh, uh, sugar to make the brine. There's um, a lot of different things in it. Hmm. Spicy. Yeah, it's definitely got a kick. It's good mm -hmm. though. I like the flavor. So John, being a hot sauce fan, thoughts? I didn't get that much on that one. Oh well, then dip. Yeah, um, this last no. one's got a good amount. Or you could dip it in there. Yeah, that works. They tested out a ton of variations of this too. Like they, we had a, a taste test in the kitchen here, and it was like they're all like 
inconspic- inconspicuously names like H4, H3. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we tried out all the variations. Get the, the, the after heat. There is an after heat. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and the thing that's the one that you eventually you know, wipe <laughs> yeah. in your forehead. Maybe we should have done this at the end. <laughs> 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 Sweating. It'll make the podcast more truthful. Mm-hmm. We can get into everything like, gosh, okay, and then we'll get into this and that. We just Adrenaline start sweating. Rush. Less guarded. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's truth sauce. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's what are your thoughts on the bigger so bite? Yeah. <laughs> things you dial back, things you want to... It, it's good. It's, uh, it's not an overpowering flavor. It's like a subtle, mm-hmm. but it's... Not all hot sauces. Do you want that to be the main thing you taste when you're eating, when you're having it on food? You want mm-hmm. to taste the food and then have some heat, you know, have it complement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what it seems like it does. Yeah. yeah. It's a complementary heat. Yeah, I'd, I'd say well, one of the big things for me with hot sauce is it just like, I'm not a huge fan just because it makes me like, I mm-hmm. can't eat anymore. Like yeah. my lips are burning and all that stuff. Luckily, I didn't get any on my lips, so I don't know how that feels, but it's not a, it's not a, Hey, I don't want to have any more anymore. Like it's, it's, it's like, oh, I'll have another bite. I'll try yeah. this again. It, I, I, I like it. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, okay, cool. So that was sponsored by Have Hot Sauce. I will j- jump into <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, so Morgan will kind of be, will uh, be our guide here as we go through what we've created in um, uh, Facebook and um, all the different tactics that you guys can utilize. Yeah. Um, So this is your ad account. Um, We've created four different campaigns here. Mm -hmm. Um, None of them are on, but you're welcome to use them. Um, So essentially what we we use a lot at Mazama is a funnel strategy. So we're gonna start really wide targeting at the top and just sort of narrow that as we go along, hitting people in different points in the buying process. some people take a little bit more time when they're introduced to a product to be convinced to buy. So we yeah, try to hit yeah. people at all those different so different it's, stages. So like call it when <clears throat> like when we go to a tournament and then we're there for several days and so are the players and the people mm-hmm. and if they don't know us, they'll come by and see and they'll talk for a minute, you know. <laughs> And or we'll just talk a little bit. Yeah. I call it first touch. Yeah, yeah. And it's just first touch, and then then they they come back the next day. You can tell yeah. they've been thinking about <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> you got them. Yeah. So so I just you know, yeah. So, <laughs> really. so the beginning is like letting them know that you exist, like at the tournament, they <clears throat> right. see exactly. the booth. Yeah. So that's the first thing. You can't expect people to be buying a top of the line bat. Like, oh, I see it. I'm buying it. Right. That exactly. They've never heard of. No. Exactly. Yeah. Do you mind um, if I borrow a sheet of paper from yeah. you? Too? Thanks. Thanks. There's a pencil here. Too. I got a pencil. Okay. Um, yeah, so this um, A, B, and C campaigns that you see right here, mm-hmm. um, the conversion and then the two DPA labeled ones are part of the funnel. The brand awareness is a little bit outside of the funnel and it'll it plays a little bit of a part in it because we do have it set up so that you can go to the website um, mm-hmm. from there. And the way Facebook ad campaigns, and I know you've, you've been playing with it a little bit, so I'm sure you're, you're a little aware of it, but yeah. um, so each different campaign objective um, is optimized to get the most of whatever that objective is. So for the um, brand awareness, that's gonna be optimized to get the most amount of people to remember your brand, right. to recall your ads. Um, so that's how it, it measures it here. Um, you can see it says estimated ad recall lift. Um, so that's what it uses to measure the success for the... On the one that says uh, lookalike, mm-hmm. uh, lookalike of what? Is, was that on the lookalike that I already had on there? So similar. It's based on my customer list? or Yeah, so okay. this one is built off of Instagram and Facebook page engagers. Um, so people who are on your Facebook page, on your Instagram, they're engaging with it, they're commenting, liking, sharing posts, that kind of thing. Um, So then that look like audience, and it sounds like you know a little bit about it, but it takes that source audience, so that Instagram and Facebook page engagement, that source, and it finds people with similar interests to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And the lookalikes actually already automatically um, exclude those, that source audience, that original Mm. audience so you won't have those people who are already on your Facebook page it's only going to be new people right oh, cool. right yeah 
I, I have a question, and you yeah. might know this on on the look like uh, look alike audiences, and I guess you'd have to know what Facebook their algorithm that they use it's to create a look yeah. look alike because the the main key thing there for them is is baseball. Mm-hmm. So does it work off of that, and then does it keep one uh, demo? the same uh, and then add in all the other parts to them or i'm just wondering how they do that you yeah know? um they don't say flat out i mean they're pretty cautious about protecting people's private information so you can't see exactly what they're using as Secret that sauce. common source yeah um but i mean it can get pretty <coughs> obscure and um i was actually going to jump into this too but in the audience insights which i can show you in a little bit um it'll show you common interests that people have who are following your page or interacting with your page. Yeah. Um, and so the lookalike audience won't tell you exactly which of those interests it's using, but it's probably a, a lot of those. And a lot of it is baseball mm-hmm. pages. Um, I think I'm trying to remember some of the ones I saw in there when I was in there. Um, Automotive? We'll, we'll into it later. Um, uh, I saw a bunch on there. Actually, this audience I did make off of the audience insights, so we can look at that one. Um, okay, so it's actually pretty cool because about the majority of Facebook is woman by a little bit, and I think it's like, like 45, 50%, 50% women, or 55%, sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, but for your page, um, for the McDougal Bats page, it is like 95% men, which yeah. to be expected. Um, so this audience we made was based off of targeting the whole United States. And what we do when we're making audiences is we like to keep an eye on that potential reach over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially depending, you know, the, your potential reach and then your budget that you're using are gonna go hand in hand. So if you have a really high budget and you're going after a small amount of people, you're gonna have ridiculous ad costs, right. um, which you wanna avoid because you right. wanna have the best, best cost possible. Um, But so for these audience insights, um, targeting the whole U.S., the majority of the people were married, so we're targeting married college grad men, and then these demographics are based on the um, highest percentage of work industries that were within your audience insights, so people following your page. Hmm. Um, Want to jump to the audience insight to show that? Yeah. So you created your own lookalike, essentially. Similarly, Yeah. 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 And so they will test. So those audiences, all those things, all those ad sets that was the screen before, they're all going to test against each other because we don't know which one's going to work. Mm-hmm. We don't assume like, oh, that one looks really good. But to just assume that that would work, you don't know. Even if it does work, what if one of what if a different audience would have worked better? So right. that's just that's the so idea of split testing, kind A-B of testing. A/B testing on audiences. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Uh, yeah. So here you can called people who are connected to your page um, is what they go off of and so as you can see 96% men um, and this compares it to the average on Facebook to like the average Facebook page follower um, so a lot of this is like if I hover it should say yeah 31% more likely to be in this group compared to like all Facebook users wow. um, which is significant exactly yeah, yeah. And then industries as well, so you can take a look at where I pulled some of those demographics from. Yeah. Um, 157% more. Yeah. Likely. That like makes sense because yeah, it's like. I was going to say, like, uh, mm-hmm. it's actually seeing this now, like, it uh, obviously makes sense. It's just, it's still mm-hmm. surprising to see mm-hmm. it, how it's broken down like this. And this will be accessible to you guys too, as, um, as you're playing around with campaigns and stuff. Um, you can see page likes, so. Um, like the category of that type of page and then the, the top um, companies or pages that people are following. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did take, I think I took Pinnacle Sports and I, I made a competitor audience, which we'll also look into later on as well. Um, I know them. <laughs> yeah, oh, personally? Yeah, he's yeah. in New York. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so it's basically just an overall breakdown of, of what the people look <coughs> like who are following you. Uh, we can look at location too, so 900% more likely to be in this group, the Albuquerque, New Mexico group, hmm. Facebook users. 
Well, it, it makes sense. Uh, New Mexico is all wood bats for high school. Oh. So they're, yeah, they're mm. basically the full yeah. age range of baseball oh, okay. players who use them wood. Cool. Well, I guess not Little League, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, activity is what kind of devices they're using. Um, it's pretty common nowadays to see almost everybody on mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and desktop is not nearly as popular. Which with this, so when you look at this, you've seen a mobile is like 73% and that's just rising every year. Yeah. That's what you got to think of when you're making all your creative. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're just like in the shop or you're out at a transportation, or not transportation, you're out at a tournament, you're like, okay, how is this going to be mobile friendly? And the first thing to make something mobile friendly is to shoot stuff unfortunately like this vertical yeah. and as opposed to horizontal yeah. because when you shoot it vertical it's going to take up way more real estate on the thing that 73 percent of people look at yeah. yeah it actually takes up more real estate on the desktop as well when you shoot vertical facebook and instagram just basically said vertical one yeah. and if you do that your post is going to take up pretty much the entire phone and you're going to compete with about nothing else and if you do horizontal although artistically it might look better and everything like that you're still you, they'll be able to see two other posts at least it's easier to mm -hmm. scroll past it way easier to yeah. just scroll past it as mm -hmm. opposed to taking up the whole thing yeah. so as you guys are doing stories anything at all uh, even taking <clears throat> standard cameras like these and just all of a sudden turning them up like that so right. when we do post on this podcast we're thinking about that too because it's the same on LinkedIn it's the same on Facebook obviously Instagram mm -hmm. And we're making uh, words pop up on the bottom and then like a headline at the top. So when we find micro marketing of this and we're like, oh, this is something you want to know when it comes to strong, bad. And this is how this company got their hustle going. And now they're a full fledged deal. That will be like something on top and then there'll be something on the bottom. And the point of that is so it's optimized for mobile. Yeah. Right. Right. So Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I made sure because uh, I knew how much mobile traffic was. So. Our website it's a, it's a Shopify site but it's the theme we use is totally geared at, at mobile yeah, and, yeah. And That's smart. even the uh, Google Analytics and search console you know I'm running the tests that say it's mobile friendly <laughs> <laughs> yeah good Great. especially yeah. like I mean when you're sitting at a baseball game I mean who's gonna be the ones looking up bats most likely it's gonna be the parents yeah. when yeah. are the parents gonna be looking at bats right as their kid breaks a bat yeah. <laughs> when their kid breaks a bat they're going to be at a game yeah. and they don't normally bring their computer with yeah. them they've yeah. got their phone so yeah that's something cool even you if they're do. home yeah like how many times yeah. have you oh, yourself yeah. I'm, just I'm, been like your computer could be literally like right there or it could be right yep. here i've had my computer oh, yeah. be right here and i'm like you know i'm just still on my phone yep i'm so mm -hmm. I, I just i don't feel like getting i know it's right I there up my i have to pull up anymore, the same yeah. i have to go and find that i just don't want to do it will it be faster yes am i gonna do it a lot of times no yeah <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i send emails from there because it's way easier to do like yeah. i like <laughs> group emails yeah. that's about it <laughs> I, I was looking at the uh <clears throat> i think i ran across something yesterday because i've been kind of redoing and re-looking at S all the SEO on, on our site and everything and uh, and then looking at all the stuff on the search engines and uh, it's funny how like Bing and Yahoo have a lot higher conversion rate than Google does mm -hmm. you know I, I don't know if it's because of this uh, statistically significant numbers but I think it's uh, kind of a deal where people who don't want to go with the crowd our bat being new and being different and more expensive and a little, you know, edgier, if you will, and we're going after first adopters, uh, those people probably also tend to use stuff like Bing and Yahoo and DuckDuckGo mm -hmm. as well. So maybe that's why it's like double the conversion yeah. rate. Yeah. Also, uh, Bing and Yahoo tend to be on an older scale, mm -hmm. so you just have more disposable income as well. Yeah, that's, that's true. Be. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, but those things, the, both of the things we've said, they can, the Venn diagram overlaps in areas. First mm -hmm. adopters who are older, it's a very common thing. Like yeah. People that adopt things are of all ages. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was sort of the audience insights. Um, I think we touched on. I've never seen a lot of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when I'm making ads, it's like I'm self taught on everything. Uh -huh. It's like, uh, 
Same, There's same, a lot. It's, same it's, with making the bats. I had never made bats yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never invented a bat before. So just figure it out. Yeah, yeah just yeah. figure it out. Facebook There's is definitely always been changing, too. They're always updating. They're always rolling out new stuff. It's like you can never know it all because they're oh, always yeah. bringing in something new. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, it's, there's a lot there. There's a lot to, yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I noticed you're doing some of this, so this is something you do now, but just general interest targeting. Yeah. Um, and so this is going to be one of the um, audiences. Yeah. And one of the really good targeting options that I like to use is um, engaged shoppers, which is included on this one. So. It's going to be people who are clicking the shop now button and mm -hmm. um, people who are active on Facebook, actively buying from ads on Facebook. So right, doing right. pretty standard, basic, you know, right, just baseball bat narrowed by people who clicked, have clicked the call to action button shop now in the past week. Right. So, huh. yeah. And then we actually had um, our creative team come up with two types of... So you found the orange bat. The orange bat. <laughs> uh, potential ad styles. Um, we were talking about it has a sort of an artisanal feel to it. So a lot of imagery that's focused on um, the build, the structure, um, feels really authentic. Um, also using a lot of reviews, mm -hmm. um, highlighting your uh, unique value, which, right. which is the, the warranties. You know, you have that six month warranty on adult bats, and then you're gonna be rolling out that lifetime warranty on the youth bats, which is sounds like it's something nobody else is doing. Mm -hmm. So you wanna play that up as much as possible. Right. Yeah, um, I would, like we would even wanna go, as you're going further into it, just like more and more creative on youth bat lifetime warranty. Like that's the differentiator, mm -hmm. play it hard. Um, yeah, right. And talk about it. Uh, the only lifetime, the only bat with a lifetime warranty, we need to edit that in to say like youth yes. bats. It yeah. says up top youth bats as well. You see the the warranty, lifetime warranty, put youth on there as we're throwing this stuff together for you for you guys. Yeah. Um, but you get the idea of like play that hard. Mm -hmm. like you have something really different. We have all these different ways that Morgan can go in and our team go and be like, okay, look at this audience and that audience and, and we A B test this, this and that. But if you're not standing out from the crowd, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't it's matter how noise. specific your audience is. Well that's yeah. that's gonna blow their mind. Yeah. Right off the bat. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't, you, you, you yeah. can't yeah. get away from baseball metaphors. <laughs> and, um, yeah, especially a wood bat. Mm -hmm. You know, most people are gonna go, What? Yeah. It's unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, something else too is keeping the um, sort of look and feel and sound of the verbiage similar between the ads and your website so it's a pretty seamless flow when you're going yeah. from one platform to the right. other because all your conversions are going to be happening on your website the ads goal is to just get people there and to be pushing them to make that right. that conversion that you're asking it to asking it to do we'll speak in the language mm -hmm. yes Definitely. you want to you want to make sure that the consumer doesn't feel like they went somewhere on accident mm -hmm. yeah right so they're like okay this I is, should be here. I should be here. yeah and that seems and the, th the thing that's hard about imagining that is probably what you're thinking is I used to think this often it's like they'll get it yeah you give people too much credit they yeah. won't yeah. they they really won't you'll have a higher bounce rate and because you're so used to your business because any business owner watching this is so ingrained into their business it's so hard to take yourself on the whole macro viewpoint mm -hmm. and be like I get it but this is all I do. Yeah. yeah, right. What is somebody who's never heard of me before going from one thing I've seen my verbiage to another? Are they going to get? Yeah, I get that. I went from lifetime warranty. Maybe it may, may not mention it here on the website, but they'll get it. No, they won't. They'll be like, it doesn't say anything about the lifetime warranty, or it's in a different font. I also don't yeah. trust it. I'm not reading. People glance at stuff. So if the lifetime warranty like badge that we put on there the stamp that you saw mm -hmm. if that's not also on the website then it'd be like I, it doesn't say the same thing mm -hmm. it might even say the same thing yeah, yeah. but yeah. people read with like symbolism all the time right and so just because you get it doesn't mean they do and that's yeah. the hardest thing to do as a marketer is to dumb yourself down to somebody that has no idea what you do yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's real easy to forget that. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. It, and even when you try to do it, yeah. it's, a, it's called a um, curse of knowledge. And so basically a person tends to, like, you know a 10 about bats. You know a 10 about bats. 
And then you'll get into marketing like, well, let's assume they don't know as much, so we're gonna bring it down. Right. And so you typically bring it down to a six, and your consumer is typically at, even people that play baseball are at a one to three max. Mm -hmm. So most of them are gonna be at a two. So that curse of knowledge is a four, a gap of four knowledge points where you're just like, you're over my head. Yeah. Right. So it's breaking stuff down. Like you could get into the specifics of this is why and everything like that, why it doesn't break, but just straight up like, these don't break. If they do, we'll pay for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my attention. Yeah. yeah. It makes, yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Okay. Sorry. No. <laughs> Go to the next thing. Good, good I get all excited. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of passion here. Yeah. <laughs> no? Don't worry. We get excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so diving into the funnel that I was referencing a little bit. Um, so this was going to be our A band, top of the funnel, broad. We're going to be asking people for not a huge commitment. So we're, we're only asking them to get to the website to look at the content. Mm -hmm. um, and this is set up based on your Facebook pixel. Um, so I noticed you do have that installed on your website. Um, I didn't go through all of the events, but there are a bunch of different events that you're gonna want installed. So a Facebook pixel for the audience that doesn't know is basically this snippet of code that you <coughs> install onto every page of your website. And this allows you to um, retarget people amongst many other things, mm -hmm. create lookalike audiences, like we were talking about before, based on people who went to your website, based on people who bought from you, all sorts of things. Uh, probably one of the biggest strengths that we use it for is things like uh, retargeting specific pages. If somebody goes to the youth section of your page, we should probably tell them about youth bats, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If somebody goes to the adult section of the page, we should probably tell them about the adult bat, and so on and so forth. So getting that specific and giving things that are relevant to them to put them down to funnel more. So you guys have a pic pixel installed, uh, it could be a bit more specific, but I just wanted to make that quick breakdown. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, the on our generic websites or, or WordPress or whatever, on some of them you do have to put them on every page. Uh, the nice thing about on the Shopify is there's there's a spot in the admin to yeah. just plug in your admin. Shopify and Facebook. Your uh, Facebook are, pixel. Tight. Like, yeah, if we highly, highly recommend any entrepreneur that is looking to sell stuff online, use Shopify because right. of how well it works with Facebook. Mm -hmm. It makes our job a lot easier. Right. Yeah. And something we'll dive into for the DPA is uh, Shopify. It uses what's called a catalog, which is shared between Shopify and Facebook, and it's your product catalog. Um, so that's part of what makes it so easy to use Shopify when you're looking to do social ads um, on Facebook because it just sort of automatically pulls it right from Shopify into Facebook versus a lot of these other websites where you're going to have to manually go in and create the catalog yourself. Um, right. So it makes it, it's like a minute to get that catalog. I've got a question on with the Facebook pixel. Uh, I know it's there to track events, but is there any way to differentiate in, in uh, analytics what ad, you know, it tells you a lot of people came to the site, mm -hmm. but how do you know which ad? Other than just looking at the ad and seeing what the traffic is, mm -hmm. uh, you can't. Oh, wow, I thought of this question before. I think I know. Exactly. It's like yeah. it's like if you're doing A/B testing, yeah. and you see one ad, and the, the you're seeing the amount of traffic, but maybe all the people, and if they're about the same, hey, maybe all these people were from Texas, and th this ad applies uh, appeals to them, and this one, all these people were from California. Maybe that it doesn't. You, I, I don't think there's a way to uh, kernelize, get down to the uh, the nitty gritty on some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Other than numbers, is there? Um, so you can use. Um, there's actually URL parameters that you can set up, um, which I can show you a oh. little bit of here. So you can build a URL parameter right in Facebook, and it basically just tacks it onto the end of the URL. So anytime anybody clicks on that specific link within your ad, it'll, in your Google Analytics, you'll be able to see, as long as you're titling it, like it would be, so, campaign source, we would say, oh, it's I coming see. from us, the Mazama, it's coming from Facebook, and then the campaign name, I think we're in, like, funnel A. Oh, okay. And then um, content, you can say image one, two, C one, and so that would point to it's in this specific campaign, our, our A funnel, so our view content optimized campaign, and then speak to the specific ad. So as long as you're titling all your ads consistently, consistently, then you'll be able to look into Google Analytics and see exactly which ad it came from. Okay. Um, and you should be able to break down by um, 
demographics, location, and that sort of thing. Through Google Analytics? Yeah. yeah. Google all, Analytics. all good stuff and stuff I don't have time yeah. to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of oh, yeah. Yeah, deep diving. You really oh, got yeah. really to want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At a certain point, I started getting the 200-yard stare. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so now we're in the... Uh, I'll just show you the campaign. So the conversion A campaign, um, view content optimized. So getting to be the website, looking at your products... Um, and then we have it broken down by youth and adult, and we're A-B testing two different audiences in here within those youth and adult mm. um, categories. So um, it'll be 1% look like off of purchasers, and we chose that purchaser custom audience because ultimately we want people purchasing. Um, yes, at yeah. this point we're only yeah. asking them to view content, but the ultimate goal is to get them there viewing that content so that they will purchase in the future. And mm -hmm. um, so that's the what the funnel will continue to build on. Um, so we have competitor targeting as well. Um, and with these youth categories, we're narrowing by uh, parent demographic. So mm -hmm. in Facebook, you can actually say somebody who says they're a parent on Facebook. Um, and then when I we did this, when we made this, audience um we were looking at the reach size here potential reach and it was a little small so what we ended up doing is pulling in um, little, little league baseball interests as well in case somebody's not listing that they're a parent mm -hmm. on facebook or facebook isn't picking up on that um and then within these um what we recommend is doing a carousel style ad mm -hmm. um and the cool thing about these I'm sure you've seen them on your own Facebook if you haven't been using them yourself yeah. um, so you can scroll through uh, and it'll okay. show off each individual and you put copy in it too, yeah. But yeah yeah you'll put right. in copy here you can say it's lifetime can, warranty yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and you can dynamically fill it with the price too or the product mm -hmm. name or something like that so somebody has the price right off um, and then for each card so for each different bat that you're showing or different product you can click shop now and it'll take you to that exact product on your website as long as you're putting that exact URL in the link when you're mm. building the ad. So I imagine you guys have done a lot of testing on with the carousels and you find that they Yes. They work, they work very, very well with DPA, which mm -hmm. uh, Morgan will get into in a second. They work well, but as long as you know how to use them and set them up right. Right. And every account is different too. Anytime we get a new client, we always like to test out a bunch of stuff because you never know what works for one yeah. company might not work for the other company. Yeah. So we have a sort of standard way we like to start, but we're always A-B testing and optimizing and finding the best. Trying to find the better route. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah with companies like, imagine like a company like Will Leather mm -hmm. that's completely global, mm -hmm. you know, uh, broad, very broad based yeah. customer base, whereas ours is more specific to yeah you know it's yeah, a so niche thing hence the 96 percent male yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> yeah um and so then moving into the next funnel band uh b band so it's optimized for adding to cart and we're actually going to be retargeting people who are viewing content um so at this level we're going to be picking up people who viewed content but did not purchase because um, we don't want to be bugging somebody with an ad if they already already bought it, bought and that's it, yeah. especially a waste of advertising dollars yeah, going right. after them too. So, um, <clears throat> and this is great too because it'll capture. Even though we have at this stage, we have it broken down into adult and youth. These DPAs are dynamic. It's called dynamic product ad. So, using the Facebook Pixel and then the catalog, it's taking the information of exactly what product this specific person was looking at or products and then it will put it into one carousel ad um, and actually have oh really so i don't have some for you guys because we don't have your catalog set up but oh, okay um it's yeah it takes a little we would have to have shopify access and all that but oh. i can show you products for these guys one of our other clients so the, these are actually this technology the dynamic changing product self-explanatory ad ad this is 
a catalyst to getting some pretty high ROI. Just having somebody go and look at specific bats on your site, and then all of a sudden that's the specific thing that's showing up to them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that same exact bat they were yeah. looking at, followed by the one they were looking at the second most is created for each person. It's created for the parent that was looking at the youth bats. It's created for the adult that was looking at adult bats. And then maybe he went and looked at a youth bat. Well, then it's going to show him an adult and then a youth. It's going to remind him of both. Hmm. They're very high converting ads when done right and put the funnel in the correct yeah. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that this is an example of uh, somebody who looked at a toothpick holder and then a deer skin bow tie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just that reinforcement. Yeah. 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 Visual <laughs> reinforcement. Well, they, they, the, it's incredibly inexpensive um, right now, they're running um, sometimes as low as like um, 50 cents to bring somebody back to the site. Um, we've had some success stories where it's like less than 30 cents of somebody who was already at the site, was looking at that specific product, and now they're back. Yeah. Uh, for mm -hmm. like 30 cents. Yeah. Even a dollar. I think I think $3 is a steal at that for you guys when you're, when you're, you're selling a much, uh, like a $300 like best bat that is made. Yeah. That, that even makes sense, but it yeah. wouldn't be as high as three dollars yeah. because it works that well. Yeah. Mm. So that'd be the big the, one of the biggest tips we'd have is like implement this yeah. right. technology yeah. and implement dynamic product ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the conversion rate difference we see from not using DPAs to using DPAs is it's crazy massive. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. So a lot of a lot of people buy when you're showing them them that exact product that they were looking at. You can do that, but we have that set up as a slideshow too. So you can optimize within the carousel to have that specific product show all the different pictures that you have on the website, um, which is a pretty cool, cool aspect. And we've seen that do really well mm -hmm. with as well, the carousel slideshow. Okay. I guess uh, on the dynamic ads, it's kind of a retargeting thing, I guess. The population has moved beyond it being creepy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, gonna show, we're gonna show you really creepy pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I we we haven't we we rarely get people saying negative stuff about the ads that we create, and they're all very specific like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't happen that often, and the amount of people it converts for. Yeah. Right. So, I do remember it was it was like a new thing though, and people were shocked that they're being followed around on all their social yeah. It's like, channels. Wait stuff. a minute, how did they yeah. go? Yeah. I was looking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of those like it's really. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like, oh, I was just looking at that, and then you take that second, and you're like, Huh? Wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're spying on me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and then, so this final step of the funnel would be um, DPAs again, but you're going to be going after people who added to their cart um, but didn't purchase. So mm -hmm. a step mm -hmm. beyond that view content. Um, they're almost there. They need a little bit more love in order to make that final. So there's like purchase. a funnel within a funnel here, like yeah. a DPA yeah. funnel, because we take it that seriously. Yeah. 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 So that's the next one. Yeah. Well, I know. I know. There's a lot of times. I mean, right now, what do we have? Just an email going out. I've like, got an abandoned cart hey, email too. Hey, that's come on too, back. Yeah. I just changed the wording on it. Yeah. Too. I said, "Oh, you're so close." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the thing. So yeah. So the email one though, you your open rate is probably going to be. Um, if you're if you're doing really good and have good copy in the subject line, mm -hmm. really good, it'll be thirty percent. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Most of the time, more somewhere between ten and twenty. Where this is just going to be straight up open on yeah. everybody's newsfeed. It'll be like hundred percent yeah. open rate for the people that go on Facebook or Instagram. That yeah, day, that's kind of which what is was, everyone. It's kind of what I was getting <laughs> at. It's like it, it's more just like a hey, come on back, please, and then yeah. you just never you never know. Sometimes they do have the conversion that you know. But don't, don't but mistake with this is yeah. Don't mistake what I said though is to, to to not do it. Yeah, definitely yeah. do the email stuff. Oh, like yeah. this Absolutely. this would be complimentary to that. Right. Because the nice thing about the email thing is it's also free. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you have to pay to it's distribute automatic. this. Yeah. yeah. It just exactly. goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this this is just like they, you're in their inbox and like yeah that's right and then they're like yeah I'm not gonna do anything about it and they didn't open it and then all of a sudden they're on their phone on Instagram and there's that bat like it is pretty yeah yeah all right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean if they've gotten to checkout and they've put all their information in and put written in the name they want engraved and mm -hmm. everything you know because I go and look at them and then it's like oh yeah. <laughs> they're so close <laughs> they want it. <laughs> 
they wanted to sit on it a little <coughs> bit longer. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so that's the final, pretty simple. I mean, just retargeting those ads to carts um, budget wise. What we like to do is about 70 to 80 percent of your budget we're putting in that a band um especially the, those audiences are going to be bigger they're going to be broader mm-hmm. once you start getting down well, into really quick what she just said 70 to 80 percent of your budget going towards not sale 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 and that's hard for a lot of people mm-hmm. to do right, when yeah. they're marketing especially for their own business like no i need sales now so the concept of yeah but putting the majority the vast majority of your budget towards just Getting the idea out brand, there, brand yeah. awareness, yeah, is because yeah. how else are how else are you going to be able to have that sale, 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 uh, conversion bads like the DPA stuff if you don't have enough people going to your site? Those work off of people that are going to your site that are exploring you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if that's not happening, then there's nobody filling up the top of the funnel. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why Morgan's recommending seventy to eighty percent. No, is I, I understand that, for, yeah. especially for a company like us, we're. <clears throat> We're the David up against Goliath on uh, on baseball bats. You know, right. we're up against Wilson and Rawlings mm. and Easton and those Louisville companies. Louisville Slugger, and, yeah. Louisville yeah. Slugger. You know, those names. So, and people are have a tendency to be what I call brand zombies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they've got you know, their thing and they're yeah. Their they'll just go and much. buy yeah. what they've been told to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna, you know, we, it's hard to break into their mind and put alternatives. Yeah, in. for sure. Yeah. Our, our biggest, our our biggest barrier is, is just knowledge, knowledge of the product. So it makes one hundred percent sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If they don't know about it, they can't buy it. So exactly. you want to get as many people who know about it as right. possible. Exactly. Um, so yeah, these these are gonna get smaller. Seventy, eighty percent of your budget here. Um, my math is probably gonna be pretty poor, but you know, <laughs> probably want to do about twenty percent. 10%, 5 to 10% here yeah. as well. So um, just those ranges we found to work really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it always really depends on the client. Too. <coughs> Sometimes we have ad accounts where we don't even need the V-band of the funnel because people are buying right away. So um, we like to start here, see where people are dropping off in that flow, and then just fine tune it based on what we're actually seeing in terms of behavior, in terms of purchase behavior. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I was going to ask her questions. Yeah, it's like different behaviors from different types of ads I've seen. Mm-hmm. Different, like even on, on this one, the where you can see the traffic video boost, the, the video, and it's like gets a ton of traffic really cheap. But it's funny, those boosts hardly get any likes on it or comments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Almost no likes or comments. Mm-hmm. Very few, for, especially... In relationship to how many people click and go to the site from it whereas the static photographs and ads get ton it gets a you know a lot of traffic mm-hmm. not quite as cheaply but it gets a lot of uh, a ton of likes tons of likes and lots of comments where you can have conversations with customers and I I stay on top of that stuff, mm-hmm. you know. I That's check good. the yeah. I check the notifications. Oh, somebody commented and I go and look, you know, and you know, yeah. it's It's good there's sales there. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And well, uh, and I converse with people, it kind of blows we're, your we're mind. We're talking to clients all the time like somebody needs to go in and talk yeah. these comments. Like either hire us to do it or you yeah. need it yeah. like like somebody <laughs> needs another client. Well, yeah. I, I got a question on that. So like the video one as opposed to a picture one, is that just cuz it's and you you're sitting there scrolling on your phone, is it just one of those like Oh, this is a 30 second, 40 second video. It's like, I know personally I'm scrolling past those most of the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas a picture, oh, it's there, good, I uh, like. Is that mm-hmm. is that more just the psychology of Well, it gets a lot of why. traffic though. They're clicking on the they shop click now on button. The, yeah. yeah. I don't know. And it's I a mean, 15 just... second. I did whittle it down to the recommended yeah. Yeah. 15 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it could just be the information that you're offering in that video is convincing people like oh yeah i, I want to go I, learn I more wanna look, yeah, I yeah. Learn as more opposed to like okay i'm, I'm liking and then right. doing it yeah exactly because we have some clients where we can put a video up there and asking people to go to the website and they won't even do it you know they'll, they'll watch the video we get so many people watching the video but nobody's yeah. clicking on it and then you know we have scenarios like this where mm-hmm. for whatever reason it's working for you guys to to show a video and have people be interested enough that they want to learn more if yeah. you go through it so i yeah. think that's probably a combination of who you're targeting is relevant to them, yeah. and then the type of video you're running is is interesting, and yeah. they want to. I think it's uh, 
I like ads that um, elicit the the juices, yeah, the the emotional stuff. Uh, that, that little video. There's nobody talking. It's just a picture from up in a stadium of a guy at bat, and he hits, and it makes this awesome sound mm -hmm. when he hits with our bat. Mm -hmm. It was one of the customers sent me, and then him running, hitting a double, and running to second. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, I just talk a little bit about. Uh, the sound I said our bats make beautiful music yeah. and this note we call double mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good uh, I like the uh, copy yeah but it it's one of those things that gets the emotional yeah, juices because people buy on emotion mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> yeah and it, that's probably part of it too because um, as long as people don't have anything any settings blocking it the videos will automatically play with sound too oh. so they're probably hearing that sound they're stopping that's relevant to them that sound of the pop if yeah. you're a baseball player yeah it's probably super nice for them that emotional aspect yeah. that you're talking yeah. about yeah a lot of times they have to turn the sound on though yeah so Sometimes I, you have might, to. It, I, it, I would i saw that ad i would recommend uh putting like a sound on like emoji mm. overlaid on the video mm. oh okay so you can hear it like put your sound on and make sure you hear the song that we yeah. call the double or whatever oh, you want okay. to do mm. yeah and then that uh, gets more people i, I thought uh, maybe I'm mixing up face, face, uh, Facebook and Instagram or something. Whereas Instagram, you can have them, they're on all the time or off all the time. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically but, once you turn it on, then they all turn on. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of people setting is that you're looking at videos muted. That's mm -hmm. the that's a standard yeah. thing. Okay. On something. Facebook? I um, know mine is. On both of them. Yeah, I know oh, yeah. mine is set on LinkedIn to, as well. to sound off unless I turn it on per mm -hmm. video. Okay. Most of them are default set like that, so you'd want to just be like, hey, turn your sound on to hear this bat. You yeah. Hear uh, the bat song. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see. Um, uh, you can A-B test that as well. Like, mm. oh, that one sold more. I was yeah. getting into that. <laughs> um, do you... Yeah, I was going to just say something really quick about these this post engagement, um, something that we've been doing, which is we've been building social proof. Um, so we've been using this post engagement objective um, to get people liking, commenting. So those numbers get really big. You know, you have like 3,000 people who liked your photo or mm -hmm. something like that. So then um, you can actually take a, what's called a post ID. So say you have a post engagement ad that's been running for a couple months. It has a ton of engagement on it. It looks great. Um, you can take that into a brand awareness ad um, and you can take the post ID of that ad that was in the post engagement campaign and basically pull that ad into brand awareness so its, obje uh, it's ob objective is to get more people learning about the brand and it keeps all that engagement on it mm. so um, we like to call it social proof because somebody who hasn't heard about your brand will see it and be like oh lots of people love right. this yeah. I probably love it too right. um, so just something really quick that we've been doing Cool. Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions on the campaign? Um, no, no. Be, it, oh, I probably have a hundred questions, but um. <laughs> <laughs> go for hours. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, let's show you the uh, um, 2020 type stuff. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is uh, a bot that we built for one of our clients and it's a very in-depth one and there, the way you get to this is you find an ad that's in your news feed and in this case it's asking uh, you can get like a free phone um, if you qualify for it by um, inputting your benefits and so there's a lot of steps that go into this um, but as Morgan begins the application um, you guys will we'll kind of go through like what's going on and what's going on behind the scenes. And while she's doing this, think of like, well, could this sell bats? The answer is yes. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> uh, but putting in credit card numbers, all kinds of stuff like that. So if you go to begin application, what what are we on here? Just is so this is one of our clients. I don't want to say out loud because we're gonna be blurring out a few of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, but I mean, with this page, this is, is Messenger. This oh, is just okay. Messenger. This okay. is Messenger. So we came here from an ad. We're in Facebook Messenger. Uh, most of the time, this is done on a phone. I was going to say it looks different. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so, so somebody clicked on an ad and it took them to in the Messenger, Messenger. The app. Yeah, into the Messenger app. In this case, the Messenger desktop app. Um, so here we sent them a picture of the rules and regulations, and now it's we're gonna enter in our zip code to see um, if we qualify for this 
uh, program, for this government program. Hmm. So the bot says, you do. You live in Maryland, and now do you have existing pictures, or do you need to take new pictures of your benefits? So we could put in, uh, use existing pictures, and we created this video. So here, this video teaches a person how, and you can see that's the Messenger app because most of the time it's done on a phone, Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they can go and they learn how to send pictures of their, um, oh, cool. of their stuff. So you can have videos in here like talking about what kind of bat do you need? Do you want to hear the sound of bat? I would love to hear the sound. All of a sudden a video comes in of the sound and yeah. the sound will be on there. And you're having this whole experience, a shopping experience of this bot basically doing what you want. What now would you want? I want to know more about the lifetime warranty. Great. Here you go. Customer reviews, testimonials, video testimonials. It basically turns into this intricate thing, this conversation that they're able to have within Messenger. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the good things about this as well, as uh, more inputs up the other, looking for a picture. Yeah. Um, Not sure what we have, but. We tried desktop. Into the we have a screenshot here that we can upload. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, actually, we have this. Okay, so the bot sees um, the benefits and now what's the best number to reach and see how it auto fills their phone number. Yeah. So we could be talking about doing a custom bat for somebody, what, or hey, we're ready to ship your bat, what's a good number to reach you at, and then they can click the number. You can also input your own. You can also input a different too. one, mm -hmm. but a very easy tap. Um, what's your email? It's right there, so it's just taps. And then um, what's your address? So it, f it fetches this stuff from mm -hmm. your... Page. Yeah, from your page. And so now we're like, hey, who do we want to send the bat to? In this case, where are we sending the phone to? Mm -hmm. And these are questions that we need for this sort of program. You guys want to need to ask all this kind of specific stuff. Yeah. Um, so could this, be, this theoretically could be used to just set up a whole sale. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. you can put a credit card number on Yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at. We can also do a carousel. So here's here's the thing that's... Sorry, go ahead. Carousel. Oh, yeah, just uh, carousel ads like you saw so people could scroll through mm -hmm. um, different products. So, so let's could say... Could pop up yeah. there and just have... And yeah. so let's say somebody gets to, this is the bat I want. Okay, great. What would you like it to say? I like it to say John Doe. And then all of a sudden, the person bails, right? Well, you can send them an email. You can do this, but what also you can do is you could jump in at any time. And just actual at any time you could jump in, like, hey, and I thought instead of talking to the bot, you'd like to talk to me. My name's uh, Ian. I'm one of the owners, yeah. and um, I think you picked the right bat with this red one with your name on it. It's going to look slick. Yeah. Where would you like us to ship it to? And you just completely take over the point of sale. And let's say they forgot to do it, and you're busy making some bats, and you see that they didn't get through the whole process. You can come back the next day because you're busy and just be like, hey. This, yeah. This is me. You also mm -hmm. have the bot as you guys get bigger, automate the bot to be doing that. Mm -hmm. So the bot could see that they didn't go through the credit card, and then we could program it so that an right. hour from now yeah. or a day or whatever we want to do, which is a nice little poke, like, hey, yeah, you're really close to getting the bat of your dreams, lifetime warranty for your kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Assuming that it most likely is going to be adults going through this and not a kid with a credit card. <laughs> you never yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Huh, so like you can see, yeah, you see that like in here we're getting just all kinds of detailed information. And then another thing you do is you do shipping updates through this. Um, another cool oh, thing you can yeah. do is um, you can literally. Uh, all the people that start messaging you, they could opt in in the beginning, they could hear the sound, and then they kind of fall off. There's going to be plenty of that. There's going to be plenty of people like, yeah, no, I don't, I'm don't, i not really into it right now. I'm not really into market buy a bat, but this is cool. I went through yeah. it a little bit. Look, hundreds, thousands even. Well, every person who opts in subscribes to your bot. And so you can give promotional material. You could talk about updates on the bat. You can talk about all this sort of stuff. And they all get hit it with it with an eighty percent open rate as oh, opposed that, to a fifteen percent open rate on email. 
Um, for like sales and stuff like that sales yeah promotional sales information on a new partnership you guys are doing hey just want to let you know we're going to be at the xyz tournament come stop by our booth any sort of stuff like that 80 it's actually an 88 percent open rate right now it's going to go down because marketers like morgan and i are going to ruin that (laughs) but as of because just like email back in the 90s you open up every one you got yeah now no you get a bunch yeah (laughs) (laughs) so that's that's, that's, this is just history repeating itself but it's on messenger and it's a bit more intricate yeah much higher open rate so this will be a great first advantage mover situation for the next um i would say two maybe three years until it gets really saturated not that you should stop doing it at that point um, messenger marketing it just won't be as effective like email and then maybe right. there's some big new thing that we yeah. have no idea about oh exactly. yeah yeah. Don't, I just, yeah yeah I'm sure you know virtual reality <laughs> yeah. virtual reality <laughs> bat swaying <Yeah. laughs> test out the bat you have yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've, <laughs> I've thought thought about that before of uh, having a, a, a sh- since we're selling online and people can't hold like in a store touch and feel the bats and stuff <clears throat> Uh, is having like a virtual showroom where somebody can do a, a live chat they're on the site and yeah. they come on and you're there like the salesman and have a deal with the bats behind you on a wall have a special mm-hmm. location little room for it and say well yeah you can grab one off the wall and say <laughs> put it up close to the camera and say yeah. and see this knob is like this mm-hmm. you know it has yeah. a little different feel to <laughs> it and here's our you know midnight blue and stuff <laughs> like that I thought would be because so, yeah. you know and it's not for everybody all customers but some people would like that well, it's just yeah. you know it's just like how you learn there's so many different ways people learn that's like it's the same thing here everyone is has a different way that they're su- susceptible for lack of a better term for mm-hmm. for being persuaded to buy something absolutely yeah so this is uh, the 2020 thing I was telling you guys yeah. about like um, the creepy thing of the future mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah I haven't yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, that that's basically a, a quick rundown on what we think any company should be doing. Yeah, on yeah. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys for this. Yeah, so oh, we're gonna hang this probably in here for <laughs> yeah. podcast stuff like that. It's pretty pretty sweet. We appreciate it a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for coming on, guys. It's been a absolutely. Pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Thank you. It was nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks.